Well, I'm here, I'm gearing up for the Lexington sale. Amy and I have been sequestered uh, all day. We actually went up on the gondola, up onto the mountain, took some great pictures. Actually, I think I posted a video. Uh, I'll get Curtis to post that video of us uh, from the top of the mountain. It's probably the most beautiful thing I've ever seen live. It was really incredible. So we get back, we went to the airport. This airport is nestled in the mountains. It's really weird. Anyway, we're, you know, we get our, first thing, there's no security, which is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. We walk in, put our bags in the belt, and I said, where's security at? She goes, we don't, we don't have any security here. She goes, uh, those do. She goes, you're going to Christchurch. You know, you don't have security. Okay. So we sit in the lobby and get a beer, and thing comes over the thing, over the, over the loudspeaker. Flight's been canceled, just like that. Not delayed, canceled, flat out canceled. Cloud cover. Guess when you're surrounded by mountains, best not to risk it. So they canceled the, the flight, so we come back here. You're gonna get laid over somewhere, trust me. This is the place to have it done. This is beautiful. I don't wanna spend too much time indoors. I'm gonna go get something with Amy later on. And uh, I, I got looking at the catalog. I forgot the Buckeye Classic was here. I had this, I had the work done for the Buckeye, the Buckeye Classic weeks ago. Then we spent a lot of money in Ohio. And I'm like, geez, I don't know how many people want to buy more Ohio breads. We have 16. I know I do. Love Ohio. And I looked and I found some uh, some horses. I, didn't, I know which ones are going to go for a lot of money in here. I wanted to take a look at some um, that wouldn't. Some that would be maybe falling through the cat cracks. Now, these are horses that may very well go for a lot of money, but I'm not willing to pay a lot of money for them. And there's six horses on my list. Six, I had a list of 20, whittle it down to 14. Of those 14, five or six look like they'd probably go for decent money. Turn the page on them. Now, our trainer, Danny O'Brien, many of you have met him, seen him. Uh, Danny's a great guy, and he's got a very good eye for a yearling also. So Danny will be at the sale, and I asked him to take a look at these six horses. I'm going to give them to you real quick. You can tell me if you like them or not. We do have Lexington coming up in a week uh, and I have two pages of horses circled. I'm going to try and whittle those down tonight with Amy. What we did was we went through the catalog, picked out a ton of horses, looked at the videos for all those horses and a few other ones that were kind of interesting. Circled the ones I thought were very, very interesting. That's a long list in its own right. We're going to take a look again at the ones that we circled. We're going to look through those videos again, look through the pedigree, try and whittle that list down again. And that's going to be the horses that we are looking at in Lexington. I do have a couple of clients that sent us extensive lists to look at, and we will be looking at those also. And we've looked at those horses already, but I mean, when we get to the sale, we're going to be looking at those. I'm flying in Sunday before Lexington. Curtis will also be there Sunday. Monday, we're going to be doing videos all day exactly like we did in Ohio. So let's get to the six horses I'm looking at in the sale, the Buckeye Classic sale. Don't kid yourself. we got some nice... See you in Tuscany right here in this sale last year. Got some nice horses out of this sale last year. And there are some good looking horses. Some that I think will be very, very affordable and some very, very value-based purchases if they go for what I believe they're going to go for. We're going to start with number 40. This is a McCardle filly. We bought a McCardle filly that is a knockout in the last sale. Obviously, the McCardle Colt started with McKinnon two years ago. We weren't very high on McCardle after McKinnon, but McWicket's pretty good. A lot of good horses by McCardle, but we were very cautious. We bought a filly last year, Twinsburg. Very nice filly. We bought another filly in McNugget in the last sale. This is a filly called McKella. She's at a Markella. Now, I'll admit, I believe I've driven Markella the mother in the past, and if this is a filly, I think it was, I wasn't very enamored with her, but at the end of the day, still good breeding. Markella herself has thrown one horse, a filly by We Will See, took a very mo modest two-year-old record and made a small amount of money. Second dam is intriguing. There's a horse in there called Jersey Dan. I've driven Jersey Dan, almost everybody in Ontario has. He was a tough horse. Tell you what he would, he'd kick sometimes too, but he was a tough, tough old horse Right through to the end, took America 150 and 2, made 354,000, 23 wins. I would say the vast majority of his money were done was done the hard way, which I would mean overnights all over Ontario and other places. You look down a little bit further, Gold Dust Beach is in the third dam. Gold Dust Beach, of course, took America 149, made just shy of 700.
$100,000. If you want to take a wander down to the fourth dam, you can also see Survivor Gold. 900,000, 22 wins world champion, 151 flat win. It meant something. So this horse, Mick Kella, might go for a little more money than we're willing to spend. But at the same time, uh, good looking video, good looking filly on video. Going to have Danny go have a look at her. I suspect she's put together well. Might be a little bit higher than what I price her at and what I'm willing to pay. But nevertheless, a good looking horse. Number 44 might shock you a little bit. This is a Big Rigs Colt. Now, it's an interesting thing. This is a dual eligible. Not usual. It's Michigan and Ohio. Not much left in Michigan, but there is a little bit of money in the Sire Stakes there. And we know there's a lot of money in the Ohio Sire Stakes. This is a... This is a tenth full. Not typically what you're looking for, but a big chunk of an animal. And for those of you out there saying, no, no, turn the page, Anthony. Don't want anything to do with old mares. I've had this argument with my father. My father knows quite a bit about pedigree. I don't, admittedly. I do know all these horses. Um, but when it comes to the crosses and the technical stuff, I rely on other people that are experts in it. My father knows what he's talking about. And quite a few of our clients are very knowledgeable when it comes to breeding also. But I do know horses. You know them pretty good. And this is a good looking horse on video. Just so you know, Little Brown Jug this year, 16th, 15th full, won the Little Brown Jug. Blake McIntosh's horse won the Little Brown Jug in that horse. Uh, what's that horse's name again? My God, it slips my mind. Courtly Choice. I can't believe I keep forgetting that horse's name. Courtly Choice is a 15th full. Now, the horse, I believe, was second. Lather up, 20th full, 21st full. Crazy old mare, anyway. Uh, so there's 35 years between those, uh, 35 gener 35 foals between those two mares. Uh, you're not going to see that very often, but I like to rub it in my father's face when I see him about the, about the older mares. So I'm not going to turn my eye uh, blind to a horse that looks good. This is a big rigs, which isn't thought upon very highly. But at the same time, you guys know I like the big rigs in the first sale. Didn't get her. She went a little higher than I wanted to. But this one here has got uh, some good horses in the first dam. Splitsville, 53-1. and one, 44, You know what I love? I love looking at winners. 44 wins. Another horse, Hubby number one, 21 wins. Rock This World, 18 wins. Then Came You, 13 wins. Second dam, horse with 90,000, 17 wins. You look and say, that's not a lot of money. Clearly that horse racing in the B track somewhere. By the looks of these breeds, Keystone Nordic, Keystone Nordic, I know where they're racing. They're racing in Michigan. And not a lot of money there right now. So a good-looking horse, uh, an established family. Let me read here. It says, from nine foals, including a two-year-old in 2018, dam of six winners, two and 54, three and 56, four and 58. This horse is not going to go for a lot of money, but a good-looking horse. I'm not going to walk away from a good-looking horse, especially when it has value. Number 44, big enough, might be just enough for us. Number 54, we skip over to number 54. Number 54 is an Uncle Peter Colt. You know how I like the Uncle Peters. This is an Uncle Peter Colt. Second full, first full, took a mark of 155 and four, made over $100,000. This was by winning fireworks. Winning fireworks is definitely off the beaten, beaten path in Ohio. This is a half brother to In My Dreams, who is this an Uncle Peter Philly. Now, in the second name is a horse I know very well. I raced against him many, many, many times. It's a fact, Jack. Mark of 54 and 2, 27 wins, 427,000 made. Early Miss Molly, 27 wins, $119,000 made. Third and fourth dams are a little weak, a lot more than a little, a lot weak. And they show a fifth dam. So for me, you're talking about a young mare, second foal, first foal, very well established. Second dam has a family of established horses. Now, this isn't, we have some Uncle Peters, great video, but there's a hard line on this horse. I think if we can steal this horse, it's a horse worth looking at, and this Uncle Peter filly, but of the six I picked, this one came in at sixth, sixth. Hard line on this horse uh, is moderate and fair, and a lot of value packed in them if we can get her for what I have this horse picked at. Now, curious thing, I always wondered why people don't do this more often, maybe it's I don't know, probably just, probably just the way people feel. This is a Rock and Amadeus filly. Now, the funny thing about this filly, her yearling video is her jogging. She's jogging. Big, wide, not big. I'd say medium-sized, wide filly. 
clearly isn't going to hit anywhere. Uh, the first dam has uh, two foals. Both of them, uh, both of them are racing. I believe the purple rain, rain and purple rain, is a Panderosa now too. Um, doesn't show racing at the catalog time. I believe it is, but I can't be positive about that. Double negative is a foreclosure. Took a mark of one fifty five and one. Now in the second dam is a filly I watched race in Toronto for two or three years called Much Ado. Very very nice mare. Uh, Nick Colucci campaign this mare when she was really really good down in the third dam is duke duke so you have um horses that are racing in the first dam very solid mare in the second dam and a sire in the third dam so rock and requiem again probably a little more than what we have her pegged at but she falls into that zone of through the cracks or uh aside from everyone else we will be there for rock and requiem number 57 now, all the way over to our last two, we're almost near the end of the sale. Number 99. This is my number one pick of the sale for us. This is And Away We Go. We've only had one And Away We Go, and it was Wind Chaser. Wind Chaser had a very distinct gait. I saw a lot of the And Away We Goes had the same gait. This filly, Flaming Andy, does not. This filly has a huge gait, big filly. She has a sister that raced in the Sire Stakes for Mark Stacy called Lovely. Vacation, tough, tough mare. Whole family's race horses, lots of wins, lots of money. No will, no world beaters, no killers, just a lot of nice horses. Flaming Andy's the type of horse I like. This is a big, strong, athletic-looking filly. This filly shouldn't bring a lot of money. I don't want to say what I ever pegged at, but I think uh, another value-based purchase. And for me, I'd be very, very happy to bring this filly home. Just go and look at some of these videos if you want. There's only six horses here. Swing over to the Buckeye Sale. Just Google it, pull up the videos, and you will see what I'm talking about. All six of these horses look tremendous on video. Number 103, the last one, number two pick of the sale, the last one we're looking at on Tuesday, and her name is Hoochie Girl. Now, she's a Mr. Big. Mr. Big stood, stood in Ontario and was not thought too, too highly of when he was here. Had some good ones. I had one that I really liked. I only had him a few starts, but I really liked him. What was his name, that horse? Remember you hated him? He's on the fridge. His picture's on the fridge. Anyway, I can't remember. His, I, I love this horse. We only had him a few starts, and he did really well with him, and he left. Now, this filly may not be affordable. This is a filly by Mr. Big. Uh, first full by a McCardle mare with seven wins, 35000 made. But that mare is a half-sister to Better's Edge. So the second dam is a dam of Better's Edge. Third dam is a dam of All My Life, Cactus Creek. This is, a good this is a good family, real good family. We really shouldn't be able to get this filly, but I guess not near the last of the sale. I, f I missed it. There's, no, no, there's quite a few more on the sale. It's around the middle of the sale, but the last horse that we're looking at on Tuesday, Gucci Girl. Go look at the video of this filly. Go look at the page of this filly. If we can buy this filly, she's probably a really good addition to our burn. A Mr. Big yearling filly. Um, out of a out of a half sister to Better's Edge, first fall. So those are the six horses we're looking at on Tuesday. Now I am a little I have a little trepidation moving forward, uh, wondering what everybody wants to do. I know there's some people out there really waiting for Lexington. There are some other people out there that have already bought horses that are maybe waiting for Harrisburg or maybe they're done for the year. Um, I would like everybody to have a look at this book, have a look at these six, but certainly don't overstretch yourself. And, um, you know, with, with Lexington coming up, Amy and I are doing all the videos again, too. This kind of falls in a tough spot after the big Ohio sale and before Lexington. And I think that's a good thing, though, also, because there's a lot of other people out there that won't be attending this sale. And for us, I think that's a good thing. We have an opportunity to pick up one, maybe two, uh, horses that I think are extremely value-based. Some are really well-bred. All six of these horses have a tremendous video and I think are worth looking at. So that's the Buckeye sale. That's the Buckeye sale on Tuesday. Sale starts at 10 a.m. I'll obviously still be in New Zealand, but Danny O'Brien will be there looking at these six horses, especially for me, for you, hopefully, and we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get none. Maybe we'll get a couple of them. I don't really want more than two, maybe three at the very most of these horses. We already have 16 Ohio breads and a few more that are on their way. So we're going to have a big, 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 big stable next year in Ohio. And I'll be doing the video for Lexington. Mike, it's a lot to tackle tonight. 
I don't know if we'll be able to do it tonight, but I will have it done in the next 24 hours, at least the first few days, first couple of days of Lexington. I don't know the best way to do this because obviously between the horses you guys like, the horses we like, the videos, the pedigrees, there's a lot of horses there, a lot of horses to look at. So maybe uh, we'll give you a brief overview of maybe some horses I'm really interested in that we're going to be heading towards the first day we're on the ground. Anyway, that's the Buckeye Classic. This will be attached to the email of, of uh, this week's videos. I think the video only lasted about an hour this week. We got a lot going on, but a lot more coming up uh, as everybody winds down their season. We do have the Breeders' Crown coming up. I touched on that in the video. Uh, in the other video, we are booking some hotel rooms at the casino for the 19th and 20th. I have only booked mine and Amy's for the, for the 27th, the returning week. Obviously, if something happens and we're not coming back, then we will uh, we'll be able to cancel it. So, anyway, that is the sale. That's this week in a roundup. Breeders' Crown coming up. Some gold coming up this week. Uh, still a lot going on, but a lot on the horizon and a lot to talk about in the coming weeks here at thestable.ca. Talk to you soon. As I said, if New Zealand is on your bucket list, make sure you make it here before you die because Queenstown is... Uh, Take care. You want to know what I've been up to since uh, since I left uh, Canada and came to New Zealand? Obviously, I've been speaking at a conference, and uh, it's snowing here because we're on the top of a mountain. I'm going to show you the most incredible view I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, I spoke uh, Thursday, I think. Spoke Thursday in uh, in uh, Invercargill. Drove in Invercargill, got to find an Invercargill, <laughs> and uh, flew to Queenstown. No, drove to Queenstown after Invercargill, and uh, this is the most incredible view I've ever seen in my life. Just one second, I'll give you a look at what I'm looking at right now. I've never seen anything like this ever before. I'm going to tell you what, if you have ever thought of uh, coming to New Zealand uh, and it's on your bucket list, make sure you don't die before you get here. This is a spectacular view here. People are nice, food's good. Queenstown, New Zealand is an incredible place to visit and uh, I'd come back here in a heartbeat. Unfortunately, we're leaving in an hour and a half. We are flying to, uh, we are flying to, uh, back to Christchurch. I gotta speak tomorrow night in Christchurch. Then I gotta speak in Caraca. Then I'm gonna close the conference, a 45 minute speech in, uh, Auckland. Then I'm coming home to all you. Anyway, it's been a tremendous trip so far. Just an absolutely eye-opening experience here in New Zealand.